So welcome to the masterclass where we're going to be talking all about the base for runway and editorial. So I'm going to show you how the skin, so the foundation and the concealer and the powder are basically applied for when you're doing runway and editorial. So whenever you're working in fashion, the idea is to keep the skin kind of as fresh looking as possible and as natural looking as possible. So you don't want to like overload the face with product you don't want to use too much powder um, because it's really all about that natural skin like their their own skin but better um, depending on what the skin finish should be so when it comes to runway it is all dependent upon who the key artist of the show is so some key artists and some brands they like the skin to be like way more raw and some brands and key artists love the skin to be very done and beautiful pretty glowing so it really depends also on who you're working with and even some shows you know the skin needs to look kind of like dead or for some shows the models even need to look tired and that may be the idea so it also really depends on what the look for the show is going to be but i'm just going to show you two ways of doing skin so i'm first going to show you more of a natural almost they call it in fashion they call it like raw skin and then you have more kind of like a glamorous done skin so that's how they call it in fashion raw skin and done skin but i just quickly also want to show you just some products that you need to have in your kit whenever you're going to be doing fashion so first of all i have this bag filled with face and body so i have mac face and body in here but i also have the dior face and body in here just because i really love some of the tints from the dior um, face and body foundation now they are not like similar at all but i love to use them both because the dior backstage is just slightly more matte and they have like really nice colors for people that have like an olivey undertone so i have like 4wo and 3wo in my kit because those are really good like all of the undertones and i really needed something especially when you're working someone that is maybe like mixed race or from indian descent you need kind of that all of the undertone and that's kind of hard to find i feel like so i especially love those shades in the dior backstage foundation and also the reason why i keep this specific foundation in a small little bag is because i use it whenever i'm working on models but i also use it whenever you have to do like body makeup in the lineup. So that's why I keep it in this little bag and I can just put it in my set bag or easily just take it with me. So that's why I have these foundations in here. But then I also have the rest of my foundations and base in my actual makeup bag. So I also have a video which is going to be all about my kit. So definitely watch that. But I do quickly want to show you some of the things that are, in my opinion, a must have because you need to, first of all, have the face and body, like I said. But then I feel like the face and body is great for lighter skin tones and they have really great colors for the very dark, dark skin tones right now as well, which they changed, thank God. But I tend to not really use the kind of like medium, like people that are my skin color. I don't really like to go to the face and body. I feel like the color sometimes is a little off. So I love the Dior backstage, like I said. But if you're working on dark skin especially, these are some of the shades that I use a lot. So for darker skin, I have the Shiseido Synchro Skin. So this is number 410 and I have 420. So these are like the colors that I also use a lot backstage for like models that are dark that are slightly darker than me but they still have a lot of yellow and red undertones both combined I love using these so if you're looking for foundations to buy other than the backstage and the face and body I suggest just finding a foundation that is kind of like very neutral and by that I mean something that is maybe not too glowy not too matte just right in the middle has a very nice natural light to medium coverage because you can easily make your foundation more glowy with the right skincare or you can make it more matte with the right skincare so having something that is like right in the middle is going to be 
the best thing to have in your kit. And then also a couple of must-have products for backstage are the Laura Mercier Secret Camouflage Concealers. I depotted them, um, but I think everyone knows it pretty much. It's like a very popular um, concealer, actually. And I just have it depotted in these little, except for these two colors, those are MAC correctors. But these are all the Laura Mercier um, Secret Camouflage Concealers. And they're like a must have. Um, but I'm gonna talk about that later, how to use it. But everyone at Fashion Week has those. So those are great to have. And in my opinion, like it is also must have, like MAC has these Pro and Conceal palettes and they have like a really, really, really deep dark one. So I put those shades in this little Artist Kit Company palette. And these are a total must have because you can see that you have like super dark shades in here. And there are so many models that are so deep. Um, so you really need like, especially if you're gonna do any makeup. Okay, scratch that. If you're a makeup artist, you need to have all the shades that are available, like every single shade. So that is just something that's really important. But the reason why I'm emphasizing it for fashion week is because you don't know what type of model is going to be sitting in your chair and you have so many models of so many different skin tones. You need, so you need to have everything. You can see like, do you even see how dark black that is? It's great to like mix into products if you need to deepen anything. So that is in my opinion, a must have to have that. It's like the darkest pro and conceal palette. So that is a must have. And then other than that, you can just choose by yourself what you like to use. Um, but I can just show you, I just, but I just want to show a couple of things that I feel like a lot of makeup artists backstage also have, like everyone has this in their kit. YSL Touche Clam. I only have the lighter skin tones because I only use it for, you know, the lighter skin models. And then also the NARS Creamy Concealer is used a lot backstage. So pretty much everyone has that in their kit. And these recently launched, but I'm like in love with these. Like, this is my new favorite concealer. I have one, two, three, four, five, six shades, and I actually want more just because this is my new favorite concealer, like number one. Like, if I just had to choose one, I would choose this concealer for the rest of my, like, I swear, I'm obsessed with it. So it's the new Dior Backstage Concealers. It's like, at least in my opinion, for my taste, it is like the most perfect concealer ever. It is medium to, f is it full coverage? It's medium coverage, I would say, but you can definitely maybe build it up to full. Um, it's very glowy, but not too glowy. It just looks glowy in the way where the skin just looks plump and hydrated and nice and the shades are amazing seriously the shades are on point like i swear the dior backstage foundation shades are so on point um look at this deep rich shade it's just beautiful so yeah that is my personal must have right now as of right now because they just launched so those are amazing and then in terms of powder i would say just have a good translucent powder so my favorite is the makeup forever this is like the hd loose powder i love to use this and i love the fenty beauty one because they are actually translucent like even on dark skin tones they look good so those are kind of like a must-have okay so now that you know what kind of like the must-have products are for runway editorial let's get into the skin so first i'm going to start off with kind of like more of a raw natural skin so with that what they usually like is they want the skin to look like it has nothing on it so like i said it really depends on the key makeup artist that you're working with and what the show look is going to be so that is also super important at every runway show you'll have a demo so they'll show you how the skin is like how the skin needs to be done and of course the entire makeup look they're going to show how you need to create it but i just want to show you if you've never done runway or editorial or anything in fashion just kind of the way i personally like to do it so my personal taste isn't really raw skin it's not really my style but it's good to know how to do it so raw skin means 
there's almost like nothing on it it looks like nothing okay so usually pretty much everyone starts off with obviously skin prep and then face and body at every demo that i've seen everyone just uses mac face and body like i said on my skin tone it's not my personal favorite that's just me um i know that some people do face and body for everyone but it's just me personally i just love face and body for very light skin or very dark skin so what most people do just to let you know is so c1 is the lightest shade that they have in the mac face and body and then you also have the white so a lot of the times like the white is being mixed with the c1 just because you know there are people that are lighter than this skin tone obviously so that's why it's always good to have the white in your kit and to be honest i don't have a lot of n or w shades i have c1 c2 3 4 and then i have c5 7 and 9 and then i just have n6 and i think i have n0 right what do i have oh no i have a w0 but that's just me because this one is like pinky like a light pinky because sometimes people that are very light in terms of their skin tone they have like a little bit more pink i sometimes feel like the c1 and even when you mix it in with the white can sometimes look a little bit too yellow i feel like but you know it's always difficult trying to find the right skin tone and so yeah and then in terms of the n shades i just have n9 which is like the darkest shade and yeah okay so i just want to show you a comparison of some foundations so this is c5 yeah this is c5 this is c7 and this is my own foundation which is the synchro skin from shiseido that i also have in my kit and you can see that you can you see the difference in undertones like i feel like this is just way too pinky in my opinion and this is the yellowest face and body that mac has on my level of dark like on my darkness level so yeah i just feel like this is just a little bit like slightly too warm let me just first swatch it i mean it's not bad you can blend it in but it's just i just You know, I can make it work, but it's not my first choice on my skin tone. But I'm going to show you both of the foundations, how I like to use it. So I'm going to show you the way that they usually demo a skin, which is usually great for lighter skin tones. And then I'm going to show you how I like to do darker skin tones because I personally do darker skin tones differently than women or men that are of lighter skin tones, so more like the Caucasian skin tones. So when it comes to raw skin, what they'll usually do is maybe just get a little face and body and basically just massage it like a moisturizer into the skin like this. Like tap it under the eyes. And what people also like to do a lot backstage is they kind of like to rub the MAC face and body and it, it gets a little thicker once you rub it. And you can just apply that also under the eyes. Let me just get a little bit more the face and body. And I'm just going to just rub it. Keep rubbing, keep rubbing. And you can feel at a certain point it, it starts getting more like like more difficult to kind of rub together you can feel that the texture is different and then you can just tap that in any areas where you want slightly more coverage and i take really good care of my skin so i don't have at the moment any like pimples or you know I don't have a lot of discoloration. 
I tend to sometimes get a little bit of hyperpigmentation around here. But like this can even just be raw skin. And sometimes people want to see like pimples or they want to see like certain marks or hyperpigmentation marks or like redness in the cheeks and stuff like that. Some people just want to leave that. Um, so it really depends on who you're working with. But overall, this is how you can just create that raw skin by just massaging some of the face and body in. And that's it. And if you want to minimize the shine, you can just do what I did in the skin prep video and just kind of blot off. If it needs to be less glowy, you can just mattify it like this as well. So yeah, the raw skin is pretty easy. Um, let me just take a look in the mirror. Um, I don't know if the camera is going to pick this up, but I still have some hyperpigmentation here. A little bit here i just have a couple of like marks from acne that are still coming through and here as well so yeah but usually when it comes to raw skin you're probably just gonna leave it like this um if you have some like perfect skin maybe you won't even do the face and body all over maybe you'll just do the face and body just maybe under the eyes and that's it but overall raw skin just means that it just needs to be very very natural okay but when it comes to more done skin which i like <laughs> i am more the done skin girl i just love good glamorous skin so like i said i'm going in with the synchro skin just because i feel like the tone just matches me better and i just love the synchro skin from shiseido a lot like it's one of my favorite foundations so i'm just going to mix two shades now i also usually mix two shades whenever i'm working on pretty much everyone that's just me because some people have a darker forehead some people have i don't know lighter cheeks so i like to just kind of place different shades all over and sometimes i already kind of highlight a little bit with foundation so sometimes i'll even like apply just slightly lighter foundation already here and just slightly darker here just to kind of keep the dimension in the skin okay so i just have my foundation here and usually when you're watching a demo they'll just like apply the foundation like in the areas first where you may need it and it's always a blend as you go and just picking up like a little bit of foundation and you're really just blending as you go so you can really watch and see how much you really need and also depending on the model like a lot of the times the foundation isn't even applied everywhere so for instance on my face i like to do my forehead just because my forehead isn't really even in terms of the tone but a lot of the times like they'll just do a little wash of face and body on the forehead not a lot usually the focus is going to be just here around the nose area under the eyes and on the cheeks and maybe wherever you see some redness so focusing on kind of like the center of the face usually and just blending as you go. And so depending on the model, you really have to just look and see where do I need to apply foundation and where can I just leave it as bare as possible. That is just important. And by kind of swiping it, it makes it more sheer. And if you just stamp it in a little and with your finger, you can kind of add slightly more pigmentation where you want so me personally whenever i want like a little bit more coverage in certain areas i'll just like really blend and kind of stamp the foundation in on that area so for me it's always here around the mouth and on my cheeks so that's why i'm just focusing right there 
And this is the step that I only do for darker skin tones. So I have a slightly pinkier, darker shade of foundation here. And I like to use that to color correct around the mouth. So this is something that I do on women of color a lot. And it's not really something that I do on people that are lighter skin, but I feel like I want to mention it because I feel like in fashion, um, you know, everything has been very targeted towards lighter skin. And I always see people doing foundation and runway, just face and body and just a little dab of concealer here under the eyes. And they just put concealer on acne spots. But I feel like dark skin, it needs like a, like a different way of working. Like the hyperpigmentation around the mouth, you can like stamp it in. And to be honest, darker skin can take more makeup without it looking cakey. Usually on lighter skin tones, I've noticed that when you apply too much, you're really going to see it on the skin. And that's, and I think, I'm not sure, but I think that's because lighter skin tones, they reflect more light than darker skin like dark skin absorbs light because it's darker so i think that's why you don't see the makeup maybe as much and also a lot of people that are darker skin like the texture is different usually darker skin tones have slightly more oils in their skin not everyone but a lot of darker skin women have more oils in their skin so i feel like you can just use a little bit more product and if you really blend it into the skin, it can look super natural. So as you can see, I'm just in the areas where I feel like I need it. I'm stamping that slightly warmer foundation in. Just in the areas, because here are just some areas where I have some hyperpigmentation. So this stamping of product or foundation, you can do on everyone that just needs more coverage in large areas because you can see like my skin looks snatched like it's done but it, it still looks like skin it doesn't look cakey it has a beautiful sheen a beautiful glow and then i just i would like to with no extra product i like to really blend it in like really almost like stamp it in just kind of blending with no product to make sure it's super blended and also a thing don't do body makeup whenever you're doing a model on like for runway because you really have to wait for them to put their clothes on first usually there's a rehearsal in between maybe they'll like have something like a robe on and then they'll have to like change right before the show and you do really do not want to get clothing dirty. So always do body makeup in the lineup and also when you're in the lineup, be super, super extra, extra careful with any type of product, like even moisturizer, you have to be careful and aware of the clothes that they are wearing. So be mindful of that. And um, it also depends on each show. You know, I've done shows where I had to like really do full on concealer on the knees and like full on body makeup. And then some shows are like, no, we don't want body makeup, like skip the body makeup. So also be aware that you always need to follow what the key artist and the core team says that you need to do for the makeup. And then when it comes to concealer, oftentimes you don't really have to use a lot if you already apply foundation underneath the eyes. I know that some people say don't use foundation under the eyes, just concealer, blah, blah, blah. But I feel like in fashion and editorial and also me and the way I like to work, I actually love applying foundation underneath the eyes. I sometimes feel like applying that kind of darker shade of foundation kind of helps correct sometimes not on every skin tone but it sometimes helps to correct before you're going in with the concealer i feel like so i'm a personal fan of it and you need to use less concealer if you put foundation on first so oftentimes on lighter skin tones even also darker skin tones but depends um 
they'll often use the Laura Mercier and the Touche Eclat concealers. They're like OG products. The Laura Mercier is a very kind of dry formula, great for areas around the nose and great for like covering up pimples because it has like a really dry formula. And the Touche Eclat is like a very lightweight, very hydrating um, product. And it just makes the under eyes look very radiant and fresh. And so that's used a lot underneath the eyes. But you know, it also depends on the model you're working on, obviously. So let's say the model is super, super tired. Maybe you need to use a little bit more compared to a model that has like perfect under eyes or whatever. But on darker skin tones, I like to use the Dior Backstage concealers. And then I also love going in with the Fenty ones because I don't use these for lighter skin tones for fashion and editorial because they're very thick, very creamy, very full coverage. And you can get away with that whenever you want to create done skin on darker skin tones, not so much on lighter skin tones, but that is just my personal preference. So I'm just going in with a Dior backstage concealer on myself. I don't think I have my exact skin colors. I'm just going to mix. And I personally love using concealers that are slightly more pinky. I feel like it looks a lot more natural underneath the eyes and you're really kind of covering up any darkness under the eyes without creating that crazy like highlighting effect. So just kind of with a fluffy eyeshadow brush like this, you can just pat in the product. And I focus mostly on this hollow area so instead of taking the concealer all the way to the crease that is more like a glam television celebrity way of working don't do it with fashion it's it's gonna not look natural so you want to keep the concealer in this area here like focus it here in this inner corner And I like to just dab it into that corner because usually this is the area where the darkness is. So just dab it in. And just keep it on that inner corner. And you can see that's all you need. You don't need to take it up all the way to the edges here because then you'll lose any of that depth in the eye area and you don't want that. You don't want it to look like, bam, concealer. You want it to look like someone just has perfect skin. And you can do a little whatever you have left. You can do a little bit here. But overall, I just keep everything here in these corners. And usually the eyes are left bare, depending on what the look is gonna be, but Oftentimes they won't want you to go in with like concealer to fully cover the eyes. Oftentimes you'll have to just go in with shadow immediately because they want everything to look like skin. They don't want it to look like, oh, you have a lot of product on. And if it's going to be like a colorful look, then of course it's different. But whenever you're doing more of a natural look, even they want you sometimes to even like not even do the eyes. Like, and then just like leave it like skin. So, but it depends on what the show look is gonna be. Yeah, but just to let you know that you don't need to like go in and kind of prime those eyelids like you would maybe do whenever you're doing more of like a television and glam look. So it's different. And then I like to do this on dark skin only. I sometimes take a little bit more of that concealer and I just usually take it around the mouth. So I'm just doing thin layers, I'm building it up. And then when it comes to anyone that really has acne or problematic skin backstage, so right now my skin is doing really good, but spot concealing is one of the most important things whenever you're working in fashion because you can create that kind of perfect looking skin without having to do full coverage all over. So you can keep the skin super fresh and super thin and sheer, and you can just add 
full coverage just in the areas where you need it. So make sure you just have like a tiny little like pencil brush or something or like a lip brush. And if you need to spot conceal, you can just just mix in. And then in areas where you really need it, like I have like a slight like tiny little bump here. You can cover that a bit or even around the mouth. And I'm hitting these corners just because I I have hyperpigmentation there, like I have slight darkness there. So this is not for everybody. But just going in with that Laura Mercier, you can just kind of blend it with your finger also. Or like blend the edges around it. I don't know if the camera's picking it up, but I'm just like just fixing some of those areas. So these are kind of the two foundation techniques that are being used in fashion. It looks easy, but the difficulty is going to be in creating perfect looking skin, but it looking like they don't have any foundation on. That is going to be the difficulty because on some people, you need to be blending like four different colors, especially when you're working on models of color to really like make everything match because a lot of models also have different tones on their face than on their body, especially when you're working with darker models. A lot of the times, some models have a very dark face and some have a very light body or like the chest will be like really light so also that's super important whenever you're doing foundation on any model or any person also make sure that you know what they're wearing like are they showing legs and are they showing arms and what is the skin color of their arms like maybe their arms are like a lot darker than their face then you need to kind of think like okay am i going to darken the face yes then you need to darken the face maybe a little um but maybe if they're not showing any body then maybe you don't have to look at their body and just focus on what the actual skin color of their face is so make sure you take a good look at what the entire body looks like and that you know what skin is showing and to make sure that you can bring all those different colors no matter what color they are but somehow you need to make all those different shades and blend it into one so i'm going to see if i can also demo this skin again but one time on a lighter skinned model and then one time on a darker skinned model, just so you can really see the difference in terms of how I work because I really kind of shift my technique depending on who I'm working on. So like I said before, usually on lighter skin tones, you're not really going to do like color correcting and stuff like that. And usually on darker skin tones in some areas, especially if someone has hyperpigmentation and you're going to need to use more product color correct and really blend it in to the skin so that it looks like perfect nothing like their own skin and i recently discovered these products they are the radiant creamy color correctors from nars they are my new new favorite correctors there are two more shades i have the colors medium and deep um but these are my most used colors and I can actually mix them um, because there's like a shade in between these two colors, but like I can mix them, you know, and create a different shade. But the reason why I love these color correctors so much is because they're very sheer and thin, but they do their job. Um, and especially because you want the skin to look very natural in fashion, these are amazing because I feel like some of the color correctors out there especially the creamy ones they're like too thick and too full coveragey and it just mixes in with the foundation and it just becomes a mess in my opinion so these are my must-have correctors love them super sheer super thin and they dry down really well okay and so going into powders it depends on who you're working with again <laughs> 
maybe said this a million times already but yeah usually just keep this in mind the darker the skin the more powder you may need the lighter the skin the less powder you want to use usually not all the time but usually i've noticed okay so i have my powder not too big of a brush and usually where your powder is here in the t-zone like that maybe even a little bit here but this shine that you see here it's not there in real life this shine is just from the lighting and then your powder here can you see the difference also here can you see the difference And maybe a little bit here, but not too much. I just personally like to remove this one here. I like to keep this glowy, but this here, I like to just mattify just slightly. And that is pretty much all the powder that you use in fashion, to be really honest with you. I never ever powder more than that, unless I'm working on very, very deep, dark skinned girls. And so that is pretty much all the powdering that I've ever done for runway and editorial. Maybe on very, very dark, dark skinned girls, I like to go in with more powder. This is not something that they'll demo, at least I've never seen this being demoed, but this is just something I personally like to do. Whenever I'm working on like one of the deepest, darkest girls, I like to use these Fenty um, foundation powders because even though your translucent powder is completely completely clear of color i do still sometimes think if you use too much powder or just a lot of powder it looks a little ashy so i just want to show you this i like to often use a foundation powder like this and the fenty one it's a foundation powder so it has a little bit of coverage but you can still use it in a way where it looks sheer and natural. That's why I love using this one. But I use this a lot whenever I'm working on really dark skin tones because underneath the lighting, darker skin tones look a lot more shiny than lighter skin tones. So I tend to sometimes even mattify the entire forehead and like really stamp in way more powder than i just did on myself i like really like stamp it in but i'm gonna try and you know demonstrate this on a model of darker skin tone so you guys can actually see how i do it um and this is a step that i never ever do on lighter skin tones like i've never used a powder foundation for fashion on lighter skin tones i have for television but that is for another video but when it comes to fashion, this is all the powder that you're probably going to do. And you're probably going to do the powdering in the lineup. Usually you want to stay away from using powder. Maybe you can use like a little bit, but like keep away for the most part. Keep away from the powders whenever you're doing the look because there's going to be a rehearsal. Maybe models are going to eat in between and then you need to retouch the models in the lineup or before the lineup um so if you've already like powdered the entire face before the rehearsal then the touch up you're just it's just not gonna be right so if you just don't powder it you can always easily touch it up put a little bit more foundation or blend it out a little bit um, and then just usually you'll have to like leave the powder like for the lineup so yeah, it's just always important that you really make sure that you pay attention to what the look is that is being demonstrated in the demo. One tip that I want to give you, it is a mistake. I mean, I don't want to call it a mistake, but it's something that I've learned that sometimes people will demo 
a model and they work in a completely different way than you do yourself. And I kind of made this mistake and I had this show where I was an assistant and the demo was being done in a completely different way than I'm used to working. And I thought like, oh, you know, okay, let me try and do it the exact same way, like the exact same technique. And then my skin got turned down. Like I had to like take it off and like someone else had to do it. Like I was like, I wanted to like slap myself because when I saw how the skin was done afterwards, I was like, oh, you know, I should have just, I should have just done it the way I always do it. Because it's not so much about doing, at least when it comes to the skin. Now, when it comes to like intricate eye looks and lip looks, then yes, you need to do it the exact same way. But when it comes to skin, I've noticed that everyone just has their own technique and their own products that they like using and their own way of doing it. So the message that I kind of want to give here is to stay confident and then just do everything in your own technique, but just make sure that the actual result of the skin is the exact same way as they demoed it. So if it's a raw skin, make sure it looks raw. If it's a done skin, make sure it looks done. If it's like super glowy, make sure it's super glowy. Like you can't change the look just because you think done skin looks better than raw skin. That is not your job. Your job is to execute the makeup the exact same way that the key makeup artist designed it. But when it comes to skin, if you know what the skin needs to look like on the model, just try to use your own technique. Like I've made that mistake and like, you know, it, like you can't just copy someone else's technique. You really need to do it your own way. For instance, sometimes I get questions like what is better, like your fingers or your sponge or brushes. Like, you know, I know makeup artists that do everything with a sponge. I know makeup artists that do everything with their fingers. And for instance, I like doing almost everything with a brush. So it just really depends on your technique. And just the most important thing is that the final result looks the way that the makeup was designed. So that's just important and stay confident. That's my message. <laughs> so yeah, I hope you learned something. Thanks for watching and hopefully I will see you on the next one.